So let me go off on a little bit of a tangent here and talk about what's it all for, right? And let's talk about maps, right? The reason that I want to talk about maps is that thesauri, controlled vocabularies, uncontrolled vocabularies are maps metaphorically maybe but i think you could make a reasonable argument that all vocabulary even natural language is a map of the world right we take the incredible complexity of the world and we collapse that down into words that represent that incredible complexity of the world but are much simpler right and a controlled vocabulary and even an uncontrolled vocabulary um, are simplifications of natural language. The whole point of a controlled vocabulary is that it has a finite set of terms that is much smaller than the rich vocabulary of a natural language. So thesauri controlled vocabularies are maps. Now, this is a quote that you may have heard or seen before. It's attributed to the philosopher and scientist Alfred, I, I'm sure I'm not going to be able to pronounce his last name, Korzybski. Forgive me if I've mispronounced that. Right? The map is not the territory. Right? So what is a map for, really, is the question. So this is uh, Stephen Wright, who is a American comedian who was very popular in the late 80s and uh, early 1990s. And he had a joke that I think is pretty darn funny. Um, so let me tell it to you. Uh, he had a very deadpan delivery style. I'm sure I'm not going to be able to imitate it. His joke was, I have a map of the United States. It's actual size. It says, one mile equals one mile. I spent last summer folding it. I also have a full-size map of the world. I hardly ever unroll it. Right? His delivery is better. But here's the thing. Why is that joke funny? I mean, the way I tell it, it's not particularly funny. But when he tells it, it was very funny. Why is that joke funny? I'm going to kill the humor by analyzing the joke here. Right? Because a map, the size of the thing that it's representing, is not a map anymore. Right? The map is not the territory. This is a map not the territory joke, frankly. Right? The funny thing is, a map that's the actual size of the thing it's representing is also not the territory either. Because what if you have your map of the United States and you unfold it and it's the size of the United States and then you move it three feet to the left? It's neither a map in any useful sense nor the territory. It's this other thing. Right? So the point of this joke, I think, for me, for our current example, is that this map doesn't do what a map needs to do, which is to simplify a large and complex space. So what is a map for, actually? Right? A map simplifies a complex physical space, but it simplifies a complex physical space in a very particular way. There are lots of different kinds of maps. And what I have here is a, a road map of Massachusetts and a topographical map, right? Maps boil down the incredible richness and detail of the physical world to just what you need in a particular situation, right? When you're driving, usually you don't need topographical information. Roads, at least in the United States, are made so that the geography and changes in altitude and whatnot are largely irrelevant. Right? What you need is an accurate representation of which roads go where, what connects how, what roads are one way, etc. Right? So a road map 
focuses on particular details that you need when you're in a car. Right? On the other hand, when you're hiking, you generally don't need information about roads unless they cross the trail you're on. But topographical information is much more important because if you're going to be, <clears throat> excuse me, going up a steep slope, you're going to want to know that if you're on foot. Right? So different kinds of maps serve different functions for different users in different contexts. Right? Now, why am I obsessing about maps other than the fact that maps are kind of cool? Right? Metadata is a map. Right? Vocabulary is a map. Metadata simplifies the world. Right? Not uh, the physical space of the world, but conceptual space. Right? Again, back to our image of a page of the Library of Congress subject headings. Right? It doesn't get much more complex than the entire scope of human knowledge. Right? The Library of Congress subject headings reduces that complex conceptual space to a set of terms that you are allowed to use to describe that complex conceptual space. It's a large set, sure, but it's a finite set. Right? And just like you don't need to know everything there is to know about the road that you're driving on to use a road map, you also don't need to know everything that there is to know about, say, the Columbia River Gorge or the Columbia River Plateau to use the LCSH controlled vocabulary, right? to use that particular term to describe something. Right? The territory here is the scope of all human knowledge. The map is the Library of Congress subject headings. The map is not the territory, but the map is more useful under certain conditions.